Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use conditional compilation in C-Sharp and .NET in order to write safer code. Now you might have seen this feature in some way, but here we're gonna go really in depth on how it works and why it might be something you wanna look at. If you like the type of content and you wanna see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell, and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. And speaking of nickchapsas.com, I want to let you know that I just launched my brand new course all about minimal APIs. It is a from zero to hero course, meaning I take you from the very basics and I'm showing you extension points and best practices. And then I'm showing you how you can structure your minimal API in a very nice and clean and elegant way. And then I'm showing you how you can test it and make sure it's safe to push to production. With Microsoft themselves saying that they expect 80 to 90% of all the new APIs to be built with minimal APIs and all the effort in .NET 7 when it comes down to the API world to be focused on minimal APIs, they won't go anywhere. Invest early in your knowledge in them because they will only become more and more prevalent. Highly recommend you check it out. And to celebrate the launch, I want to offer the first 100 of you a 15% off using coupon code MINIMAL15. So check it out and thank you very much for supporting the channel. Back to the video. So let me show you what I have here. I have a simple API which really just has a controller. And I'm just going to use that as an example to demonstrate the point. And if I go ahead and run this controller, all it really does is it has an example endpoint. And if I call that endpoint and I have a queue parameter, let's say test here, I'm getting a JSON object back that says message is the query was test because it's getting it from this. So very basic stuff. And really the fact that this is an API doesn't really mean anything. I'm just using this as an example. What I'm going to show you works in any sort of application in .NET. Now, when I made my why you might be doing logging wrong video, many people were fast to comment that I should be using this very feature to prevent the problem. And let me explain what they were saying. So over here, I can have a logger dot log debug in order for me to log some uh, debug level uh, information. Now, do not confuse this log debug with this debug over here or the debugging over here. These are completely separate things. Log debug in the logging context is just another level of logging. You have trace, debug, information, warning, and error, I think, and then critical over that. So we want a very low level log that because we have this log level minimum or default over here in information, where when we eventually run this as a production application, um, anything below information, so trace and log will be ignored. Uh, and in development, I can go here and I can override that and I can say debug here. So I can do the following, I can do this. Now, if I go ahead and I say the same thing, the query was this over here, uh, and I log this. Now, what I can do is I can run this application and I'm going to hit that endpoint again. And as you can see, I'm getting this message over here. This is the debug message. Now, the problem with this, as I explained in that video, is that you're causing extra allocations because of the boxing that takes place uh, if you don't use string interpolation and you do um, this, uh, which really you want to do because you want to follow a structured logging approach. So the solution to that problem these people proposed is the following. I can go here and I can say if, and then I have this if and end if block, and instead of true, I can choose one of the different conditions supported by the compiler. So is it .NET? Is it .NET 6? Is it debug? Is it trace? Is it a .NET corrupt? There's many. And actually, people who create library code heavily use those to target different things in different locations. What these people suggested is I should use the debug compiler instruction, and this would make sure that when this project is built in debug mode, then that logging message will be completely ignored. And that's true, but these people are actually confusing the debug here with the debug here. These are supposed to represent different things. For example, you might want to have a minimum level of warning in your logging in production. So you might want to ignore this information. You wouldn't just go ahead and add an if debug. However, let's go back to that original point and just assume that, yeah, I want this to be a log debug and I want to prevent that from happening with having the if debug. What does this actually mean? Well, what it means is that when this application is built in release mode with a release configuration, this code will actually not be compiled at all. There isn't really a real if check. This if check is from the compiler, and when the compiler is picking this up and compiling this code, it just says, I'm going to ignore this. And let me actually just show you exactly how this works 
by pulling shoplab.io, the website that allows us to see how the code is translated by the compiler and see exactly what's happening there. So as you can see, I have the following. I have the same if debug check here, and then I have a console.write line as an example. And on the right hand side, I have the same code, but that if debug thing is not here. That is because this code is actually mocked as debug over here. If I go ahead and I choose release, look what happens. That code completely disappears because when this is built with .NET build hyphen C release, that's what the compiler will produce. And that's what this is about. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this first is because this is basically the starting point and everything builds on top of it. The .NET team has done a great team to make this quite a bit more elegant to allow you to use it in more situations. You don't really want to have if checks like this for debug in your code. What you want to have instead, now let's actually use a real example, is you want to have something like this. Let's say you want to throw if this query is ever null, because this query should never be null. It is nullable, however, it defaults to an empty string, but the user can provide this parameter to any value they want, but ultimately not null. Even if they provide an empty value, this should not be null. So what you can have is you can say debug dot assert, and you can say that if a query, you can have an expression here, if a query is null, then you can throw and you can throw with a message. You can say simply query is null, let's say, for example, here. So let's take that and actually put it in that sharplab.io code and see what happens. So I can delete that. And if I just paste this, let me just change this into debug first, actually. So this is now marked as debug. And if I go ahead and paste this, as you can see, this is throwing an exception because it doesn't know what query is. Good point. Uh, this is a nullable string. And let's just call that query equals uh, empty string here. And then simply just um, import the debug message. So as you can see now, this is still here, this line, this debug.assert. I don't have an if check around it. However, when I change this to release mode, it disappears. And funny enough, the query here disappears as well because nothing refers to it. So the compiler will optimize it even further by just removing it altogether. So as you can see, there's many benefits in using something like this because when you are working on this or when you're running tests against it because tests will run in debug mode, you might want to have some assertions that will guarantee that something that should never happen won't happen. But when you build it, you don't want to have this string allocation or any checks that slow the application down so the compiler will completely remove them. Now, how does the compiler know that this thing should be removed? Debug isn't actually a special class. It is just another class, but it has a very important instruction internally. Let me show you. If I go ahead and I F12 into this and see the implementation, you can see that all of these methods in the debug class have a conditional attribute and the debug instruction. Let's take a look at that. I can go here and I can say private void um, nix assert. And I'm going to assert, mm, I don't know, bool condition. Here we go. I'm not actually going to implement anything internally. I could be throwing here. I could be doing a bunch of things, but that's not the point. The point is that I can go here and I can say conditional and I can use any of those conditional instructions in that attribute. And I can say, for example, here debug. And now debug is special because the compiler will see this and the compiler will remove it when this is built in release mode. So if I go ahead and I use that same thing that I just wrote here, and I say, I don't know, query is null, for example, and expect this to fail. Well, what's what happens? I'm going to go ahead and copy this and go back to Shoplab.io. So let me just quickly paste that down here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just say nix, and I'm going to change that back to debug, actually. Um, nix assert, I totally misspelled assert here. So nix assert is query is null. Let's say that. And now this exists over here, totally fine. Uh, but if I go ahead and change this in release mode, the method that keeps the conditional attribute stays. However, the invocation of that conditionally marked method is completely eliminated. And this will save any memory allocation. It will remove code that isn't actually needed for production, but it will still keep it here when you build the project in non-release mode, when you're running tests against it, or when you're doing a bunch of other stuff. This feature is actually heavily used by Microsoft on a lot of their own code. If I go up here and I search debug.assert in the ASP.NET Core repository, you can see that it's basically everywhere. 
HTTP3 array builder, a lot of the code you're using without knowing is using that to ensure that all the conditions that should never happen, never happen. And when they're running their test suite, these assertions will fail if for some reason the conditions don't match. If we actually go to source dot 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 net, stupid name, then you can see here that if I say debug.assert, for example, there's a bunch of classes over here that Microsoft has written that is using that conditional approach and then internally a debug fail, a debug assert, a bunch of different uh, failure states that they want to ensure that never should happen. So this is a feature you should ignore. If you have a use case for putting something in place that should never, ever, ever happen, place that debug assertion or failure or anything there and the compiler will just remove it when the project is built for release mode. Now, some of you might say that, hey Nick, if you go back to the previous example, let's say here, debug assert, a query is null, and then say something like, I don't know, name of query is null, something like that. You can say, hey Nick, this is using string interpolation, you're actually wasting allocations, and because I have a huge test suite with many, many tests, they're adding up and they can actually slow me down. That's a fair point. However, Microsoft in .NET 6 introduced interpolated string handlers and they have actually used them here. This is awesome. Now, it won't actually happen in this case because name of is a const, but if I used uh, this, which from a name standpoint doesn't really make sense, but I want to show you what's happening behind the scenes, you will see that the assert method now has an overload that is using an assert interpolated string handler. And this will ensure internally that this code is actually conditionally called when this expression fails. If you want to know more on how that works, I do have a video on that same thing, so check that for a more in-depth explanation. But Microsoft is using it so much that they've actually optimized it, even though it's only debug mode, which is very, very nice. It's an awesome feature that I highly recommend everyone should use. It doesn't really cost you anything for performance, but it just ensures that your application doesn't get in states that you don't want it to get. And if it gets there, you get a nice lengthy stack trace as if to why it happened. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe, more than like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.